Hi, I'm Kitty Feldy. Last week, we discussed The Name of This Book is Secret by Synonymous Bosch. This week, we talked to the mysterious writer himself, otherwise known as Raphael Simon. Well, you know, talk about the style of this book, because the idea of inserting yourself as a writer sometimes really intimidates other writers. How did that come about? Well, partly it happened because uh, I was writing initially for this one girl named May uh, as part of this writing partners program. So in the same way that you would address a letter to a person and you'd write a letter in second person, um, I started writing the book that way. So that's really how how it began. Um, And I found it uh, liberate, just just as I found having a pseudonym sort of liberating, um, I found writing uh, to a particular audience also uh, grease the wheels, so to speak. And it's actually something that I recommend to other writers and to kids and to kids and grown-ups alike uh, when they ask for writing advice, as I often say to them, try writing to a particular person, real or imaginary, and imagine that you're speaking to them. And that I find really brings writing to life and it makes it a lot easier to write and makes it more fun. At what point did you decide to also include puzzles and games in the novel? Huh. I think in part that came out of the sort of the secret themes. Um, And I liked puzzles when I was younger and I was trying to make it fun uh, you know I, and and my editor at Little Brown for the first book actually really liked that aspect of the book so she encouraged me at the very end to put in a few more puzzles than were there initially and writing a series did you think about it in terms you must have thought about it in terms of series because the first book ends in a cliffhanger by the time I got to the very end that was in my head I but, you know, initially I didn't even think I would finish the one book, let alone get to write a series. Uh, but, you know, but certainly by, by the end, I, I, was, uh, I, I was thinking about the next book. And, and I, you know, I, I uh, initially had a, had a two-book contract, um, and then, then, then there was a third, and then a fourth and a fifth, because, uh, as you might remember, there's this whole theme about the senses. Uh, so we kind of came up with the structure that uh, each book would be loosely tied to one of the five senses. So how did you structure? I mean, did you know it was going to be five parts when you knew you were going to go beyond book two? I mean, how do you actually structure your series? Um, I think that really came about, I think, with the third book. Uh, when I, I kind of realized I was going to, I wanted to do this this five senses uh, structure, and the third book, you know, is is uh, this book is not good for you, and it, it has this uh, mysterious chocolate in the book. Uh, I, I personally, in real life, but also as this character, pseudonymous Bosch, being a great fan of chocolate. Uh, Came to book one. <laughs> so um, uh, th- then, uh, then it, it was re- it was sort of helpful by then to kind of tie each each book's mystery uh, to one, to the to one of the senses and uh, just it's like in the first book there's the symphony of smells uh, and it kind of, kind of goes on from there. Are you a plotter or a pantser? You know, I'm a half plotter, half pantser. I pretty much, I've now written 12 books, including my last book, which is not a pseudonymous Bosch book. But even with that one, uh, it's really been the same thing, where I have plotted out about half the book, gotten stuck, and then tearing my hair out, decided, well, I just have to start writing or I'm never going to write. And then I get halfway through the book writing, and guess what? I get stuck again. <laughs> so then I have to kind of uh, take stock and, and, and plot out the rest of the book. That's kind of what happens almost every time. Mm-hmm. And what gave you the bravery to finally come out of the uh, fake, vo- fake name world into you- putting your actual name on the cover of a book? Well, you know, initially uh, it was a lot of fun and very liberating uh, to be this character, Pseudonymous Bosch. Uh, but gradually, 
over the years, it's begin to begun to feel a little bit stifling uh, that I that I, I I can't sort of just relax and be me. And has it's be, and, uh, one, and there was one day in particular where I was on stage answering questions at Susanna's boss, and there was a question uh, asked of me. Uh, to talk about an embarrassing incident from my childhood, and the, the, it was a fellow writer a friend uh, named Adam Gedwiz asking me this question, and he wanted probably me to tell some sort of funny story that the kids could relate to. And what happened was that all I could think about was something uh, from seventh grade, where uh, a girl I knew who had recently heard that one out of ten people were gay kept counting people around the schoolyard and getting to me when she got to gay and saying, or rather when she got to the number 10. Uh, and I, I was stuck on this story and I realized how, that I was feeling very closeted, you know, as pseudonymous Bosch. Uh, whereas in my real life, so to speak, I came out as a freshman in college. Um, you know, here, I, I, you know, when I was interacting with uh, the public uh, and, and with kids all over the country, I was this other character who wasn't straight per se, but just was not forthcoming about my own personal life because that was the character to be secretive. But it, but it just felt like a, it, it felt like somehow a step backwards for me, and I felt a certain responsibility as a as a gay author to be out of the closet about uh, my sexual orientation. Um, and I just decided at that point that I, you know, I was going to eventually uh, be Raphael again and not be pseudonymous any longer. Ever? You're not going to go back? Oh, I would never say that. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Thanks, Raphael. We have interviews with dozens of other wonderful writers at our website, bookclubforkids.org. And if you're looking for another podcast, check out the Fina Mendoza Mysteries. It's free and not only a good mystery story, but also the perfect introduction to civics education for elementary school students. There's curriculum at the website and a free teacher's guide that you can download. Check it out, thefinamendozamysteries.com. <laughs>